Prying into prions, investigating chronic wasting disease. Lesson 2, pathological proteins. Activity 3, grades 9 through 12. Duration, to complete all three of the activities, two 45-minute class periods will be needed. Illinois Learning Standards, Science, 12.a.4b, 12.a.5b, 12.b.4b, 12.c.5b. Summary. Students read about the discovery of protein as the pathogen for transmissible spongiform encephalopathies, or TSEs, and about the important roles of protein in organisms. They construct paper models of protein structures. Students then create silly putty, a cross-linked polymer, and test its bounce under various temperatures. Students infer how temperature might affect the function of a protein, which is also a cross-linked polymer. This lesson is part of the unit prying into prions investigating chronic wasting disease. It was developed by the Colorado Division of Wildlife and adapted to Illinois with their permission. This presentation is only a portion of the lesson. It will demonstrate the procedures for the three activities. In order to successfully complete the lesson, you must obtain and use the entire lesson. The Prying into Prions, Investigating Chronic Wasting Disease, DVD, is available to teachers in Illinois by a written request on school letterhead. Send your request to the IDNR, Division of Education, 1, Natural Resources Way, Springfield, Illinois, 62702. Activity 3, Silly Polymers. The class should be divided into groups of four to complete the activity. Materials needed for each student, one clear 8-ounce or larger plastic cup, one plastic teaspoon, one plastic zip closure bag. For each group of four students, one clear 8-ounce or larger plastic cup labeled borax, one clear 8-ounce or larger plastic cup labeled water, one measuring cup, one ruler, white all-purpose glue, borax, one plastic teaspoon labeled borax, one permanent marker, water, paper towels, newspaper, access to a refrigerator freezer, or to a cold water and an ice water bath. Safety notes. Solid borax is a bleaching agent and its solution will burn the eyes. Safety goggles and aprons should be worn during this activity. Some people are allergic to borax. Make sure that everyone washes their hands after kneading the silly putty and completing the experiment. It is important to label anything containing or used with borax. Do not use them again with anything besides borax. Borax will contaminate materials for a long time, even after cleaning. Cover the workspace with newspapers. Put on safety goggles and a safety apron. Use the marker to label one plastic cup borax and one plastic cup water. Label the plastic spoon borax. Use the marker to label your plastic bag, plastic cup, and plastic spoon with your name. Fill the water cup with water. From the water cup, measure 200 milliliters of water and pour it into the cup labeled borax. Each student should place six teaspoons of glue in his or her individual clear cup. From the water cup, add four teaspoons of water to the glue. Stir. Using the borax spoon, add one teaspoon of borax to the water in the cup labeled borax. Stir until most of the borax is dissolved. Okay. Add four teaspoons of the borax solution to each individual student cup using the borax spoon. Count three seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now gently stir the contents of your cup using your spoon. All of the glue should come into contact with the borax solution. Take the silly putty and play with it. Do not try to dry it on paper towels or newspaper. It will dry as you play with it. Form the silly putty into a ball. Drop it from a height of 30 centimeters. Measure the height that it bounces. Place the ball in a refrigerator or ice bath for 10 minutes. Remove the ball from cooling and again drop it from a height of 30 centimeters. Measure the height that it bounces. Place the ball about 6 inches from a light bulb for 5 minutes. Drop the ball from a height of 30 centimeters. Measure the height that it bounces. Place the ball in the freezer or ice bath for 10 minutes. 
Remove the ball from cooling and again drop it from a height of 30 centimeters. Measure the height that it bounces. Wash your hands with soap and water when you have finished the experiment. Answer the questions included on page 29. Discuss the results. See the teaching strategies and key on pages 15 and 16 for more information.